Welcome to Net Zero. I am climate activist Rida Mochant. What if we could not only stop climate change, but actually reverse and restore our atmosphere to its original state? Rob Jackson is a world-renowned climate scientist and chair of the Global Carbon Project, dedicated to unraveling the ways humans impact the Earth. A senior fellow at Stanford University, his groundbreaking research spans methane reduction, forest preservation, and the intersection of climate and human health. Jackson's latest book, Into the Clear Blue Sky, offers an inspiring, actionable roadmap to restoring our atmosphere and ending the climate crisis. Welcome, Mr. Rob Jackson. Well, thank you, Rit. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. To start off with, um, your new book, Into the Clear Blue Sky, offers a bold vision for restoring our atmosphere to the pre-industrial levels. What inspired you to set such an ambitious goal and how do you believe this can be realistically achieved within our lifetime? As chair of the Global Carbon Project, I went seeking hope and solutions. And my book's the result of that quest. I think of it as a repair manual for the planet, a how-to guide for restoring our air as we go from climate despair to climate repair. We can talk about how to restore the atmosphere for one greenhouse gas in particular, and that's methane. Methane has some real advantages for restoration. It's a super powered greenhouse gas, 80 or 90 times more powerful than carbon dioxide but it has another advantage for restoration. And that advantage is that it's cleansed from the air faster than other greenhouse gases within only a decade or so after release. And that's why restoring methane to pre-industrial levels is my dream as a climate scientist. So moving on, in Into the Clear Blue Sky, you emphasize the unequal impacts of climate change, especially on vulnerable communities. What strategies do you propose to ensure that the solutions you discuss in your book are accessible and equitable for all? We're seeing climate colonialism, right? Poor nations are, are paying the price of greenhouse gas pollution. And it's caused by people in wealthier countries like mine. We need to pressure our governments, our countries to, towards a fair energy transition, to help pay the costs of extreme weather disasters and to help poorer nations transition to cleaner fuels. And lastly, looking beyond the book, what are the most effective small and large steps that individuals, communities, and policymakers can take today to turn climate change around? What actions do you believe will have the most immediate and long-term impact? Climate change is deeply unfair, as we've already discussed. It's unfair both in what it causes and in what causes it, in particular because Climate change is caused by a small percentage of the, of the population that releases disproportionate amounts of pollution, and that pollution affects people worldwide. But we do have to talk about using less, consuming less, throwing fewer things away. And here, individual behavior is the key. In a country like mine, using less means starting at home with our, our buildings and our homes, uh, how we move around in transportation. But beyond individual actions, that's not enough. We need systemic change uh, to the world's economies too. We have to eliminate the greenhouse gas emissions from whatever infrastructure is left. And to do that, our governments have to price greenhouse gas pollution. And pricing pollution makes many climate solutions feasible. And, um, and I met inspiring people all over the world, uh, changing their ways of manufacturing um, based on carbon pricing, people transforming how we travel and eat people saving forests, um, saving Arctic peatlands, and restoring vegetation back to health. So you and I can change our individual emissions and reduce them. Um, our governments have to change and decarbonize manufacturing. The take home message is keeping greenhouse gases out of the air and reducing emissions has to be the dominant, most important thing that we do. Thank you so much um, for sharing your time and perspectives today. They were truly enlightening. This is climate activist Rida Merchant. I add my voice to the voices of my Net Zero international youth peers to monitor the action of our world leaders to achieve their Net Zero commitments. Together, we can achieve Net Zero. Thank you.